Breed Reardon had never been the prettiest girl in Dunneen. Her mother's weak chin, combined with the broad features and stocky build of her father, meant she had always had the look of a much older woman, even as a child. At school, she had relied on being clever and the first to make jokes at her own expense in order to survive. After school, she continued to live at home at the farm with her parents and got a job doing the books for the largest chemist shop in Ballytorn. She made the most of herself, spending her wages on makeup and clothes, and went to all the dances. But somehow, despite her longing for a boyfriend, she knew that none of the boys who spoke to her were good enough. She flicked through magazines and gazed into the moist eyes of John Travolta, or imagined David Soule placing his hand on her back as he helped her step into a low, open-topped car. Early one Sunday evening, while her father was still out finishing the milking, her mother had sat her down at the kitchen table for a talk in an act of parenting that was as breathtaking as it was brutal. When the radio was switched off, Breed knew it was serious. Her mother started to speak to her about boys and Breed instantly dreaded the conversation that was about to happen. She had heard some of the older girls at the convent talking and laughing about willies and hard-ons. It all sounded awful. In fact, the conversation took a very different turn as her mother carefully explained to her that she wouldn't find it easy with boys. They would always be more interested in the pretty girls. Breed's eyes filled with great globe-like tears and her mother stroked her hand, telling her calmly that she mustn't worry. Her father was getting on and not in the best of health. And when he went, the boys would be knocking the door down for the farm. Breed would find her man in time and he'd be a good steady worker who would make a great father because he'd have his head tied on straight. It wasn't what any teenage girl dreaming of princess and pop stars wanted to hear, but it had prepared her for the next 10 years of her life. 